Hey folks, this is Dr. Emily Sherning with AR. I wanted to take a few minutes and talk with you as we look to the summer. And I want to say as well, my heart goes out to our folks in Texas and Louisiana who have been impacted by that terrible derecho on May 16th. On Wednesday, May 15th, I recorded a video sharing our new wet bulb brisk level tool. When I recorded that video, I also pulled up a NOAA tool that looked at near-term wet bulb risk, and I was alarmed to see high risk for that already boiling up around the Gulf. And we are seeing that risk realized, both in Houston and in Florida, just like we saw projected on the 15th there. We have reports coming in that the Florida Keys hit heat indexes over 112 this past weekend, and we know we're still talking about 200,000 households today on May 20th, 2024, that do not have power in Houston. I feel like it's worth talking for a moment about derechos because not everyone's experienced that. In 2020, we had a derecho in Iowa and it messed us up. We had similar levels of damage to electrical transmission systems to what we're seeing in Texas today. Some places around here lost power for four to five weeks. Cedar Rapids lost the majority of their tree canopy. That tree canopy was a beloved and respected element of the city. Our utility companies are responding in Iowa by going underground. My area is getting underground power to go with our fiber internet. That resilience, we know it's gonna be important in the time to come. I wanna take a minute here, you know, I wanna make sure none of us are just gawking as we look at what's happening already here in May. I wanna make sure you've seen the NOAA seasonal outlook for the US, the three month outlook. Now, like most things that are general, this is pretty good. Focusing in on the seasonal temperature outlook, I got to just say this is kind of a weird one for me to look at because that's my house right there. On the seasonal precipitation outlook, my house right there, center of equal chances territory. We're seeing some strong trends shape up. We're looking at some potentially dangerous trends here for much of the country. Let's get back on that heat figure there because that's important. You know, even in a nice equal chance area like I happen to live in. I know there could be a big heat dome or something. This is a three month outlook. It's not talking about isolated events. Stuff is coming up fast. In Iowa, we didn't know the derecho was coming back in 2020 and Houston didn't know that derecho was coming until it was just about there. We all need more give in a system that has conditions looking like this in the future especially when we're talking about storms that could help bring down the grid. For almost all of the country, this heat outlook is bad. Down by the Gulf, we also need to look in the face that we're expecting a particularly rowdy hurricane season. Here on weather.com, the outlook had already been very extreme and they have actually upgraded it further is the new outlook from just a few days ago. Folks, don't just look at these figures, get ready. If you're in an area where you could be facing life-threatening heat with no power, you need to have a plan. Do you know how to safely operate a generator? Do you have access to underground space where passive cooling might be possible? Do you have some extra freezer space, maybe an old chest freezer worth filling with ice? And do you have water in your home in case of a water utility emergency related to grid failure? Because that, that can happen more easily than you think. These are all things that we can do to prepare in areas that may not have experienced threats like this before. There's indicators right there on the horizon, the three month outlook that it's worth taking extra measures to prepare to help protect ourselves and our communities from extreme heat. Once you have your own oxygen mask on, once you have your household plan, it's time to reach out. If you have access to passive cooling or active cooling that's resilient, like generator powered or renewable powered cooling, you should determine your capacity and get yourself booked up. Talk to your friends and relatives, find out who needs to come over. As people have now learned in Houston, these sudden straight-lined windstorms, these derechos, they can leave the roads impassable. It's good to know your neighbors because you may be the only people who are physically able to help each other right in the aftermath of a major windstorm. Looking back at the seasonal outlook, and let's pull them both up on the screen, you can see friends out in the West from Washington to New Mexico. I want us to think about this seasonal outlook with you in mind too, not thinking just about hurricanes, but thinking about wildfire. When I look at this seasonal outlook, I see a big hand on the scale for wildfire. Even in the Pacific Northwest, these are signs of fire danger. Let me pull up the drought monitor here too. 
you can see here there are already droughts building in a lot of that hottest, driest crescent of the West that we saw projected in the NOAA seasonal outlook maps. It's worth noting these droughts are building. If you look at the droughts in the Midwest, thank God those droughts have been waning. We've had some rain recently, and there is more rain in the recent forecast for these uh, important agricultural areas. Switching back to the seasonal outlook, I want to focus on the Idaho Panhandle. In our recent update for Idaho's climate outlook, we saw an extremely elevated risk for fire in the Idaho Panhandle that has not previously been very characteristic of that landscape. We could be seeing the fires emerge this summer. This is an important heads up. These are strong fire signals for those in and around the Idaho Panhandle. Because that's not a traditional fire hotspot, not everyone there is going to understand how to build resilience against fire. You're going to want to have landscape margins around your home, develop your ability to seal your home against embers, and on top of that, be ready to get out if you need to. And you know, folks, this isn't just news. And let alone just an opportunity to doom scroll, this is an opportunity to see what's coming to us this summer and prepare. The actions you take to build resilience will make a big difference in an emergency. You know, when the 2020 derecho came, my family was not in the same place we are today around household resilience. What got us through a week without power and only reasonable discomfort was the fact that we're religious weirdos. We're observant Jews. We keep a traditional Shabbat. So we have candles and food that doesn't require cooking, and we're just kind of used to not being wired in all the time. Thinking about resilience without power, including the mental resilience of not being able to access the internet, is an important place for many of us to explore. If you want a framework for building resilience, people tell me my reasonable prep video is helpful. I've got a link to that in the video description, as well as the links to the resources I showed in the video today, like the drought monitor, and the NOAA Seasonal Outlook Tool. I think those are great things to check as you evaluate your own personal risk levels. Folks, we can see these next few months are likely to be a rough time for our nation and for our communities. Do me a favor, don't just study up, take action. The best window for action is now. So let's get ready. Thanks for watching and I wanna say a big thank you to the AR community. Folks, your support is the reason we are sticking around past fall of 24. You're the reason we can keep doing the work to keep an eye on the news, and help us access the short and long-term climate projection information we all need to get ready. To those who donate, who volunteer, who spread the word online and cultivate the land on the ground, thank you for all you do, and thank you for getting ready with me. Wishing you all the best, and talk with you again soon.